So this is, I'm reading a vignette from Emile by Rousseau. And um, this is about uh, Rousseau's approach to teaching reading. Reading is the plague of childhood and almost the only occupation we know how to give it. At 12, Emile will hardly know what a book is, but it will be said, he certainly must at least know how to read. I agree. He must know how to read when reading is useful to him. Up to then, it is only good for boring him. If one ought to demand nothing of children through obedience, it follows that they can learn nothing of which they do not feel the real and present advantage in either pleasure or utility. Otherwise, what motive would bring them to learn it? The art of speaking to and hearing from absent people, the art of communicating our feelings, our wills, our desires to them at a distance without a mediator, is an art whose utility can be rendered palpable to all ages. So he's saying, reading, uh, we can approach reading in a way that sparks interest, uh, makes the, it's not just a duty like you have to read this, but make, make, uh, make the child want to uh, know how to read. And let's see how he's going to do that. Uh, so first read that last one, the art of communicating our feelings, our wills, our desires to people who are distant without a mediator is an art whose utility can be rendered palpable to all ages. What wonderful means were used to turn so useful and so agreeable an art into a torment for childhood. So he's talking about, look, this is this beautiful thing, reading, you can uh, communicate with someone who has long, is far away or has long since died without a mediator. This is amazing. And how do we turn that into this drudgery, uh, which uh, young people, often view reading as drudgery. Uh, because the young are constrained to apply themselves to it in spite of themselves. It is put to uses of which they understand nothing. So we put reading to our uses, adult uses instead of child uses. A child is not very eager to perfect the instrument with which he is tormented, but arrange things so that this instrument serves his pleasures and soon he will apply himself to it in spite of you. And this is a phrase that happens throughout Emil, Ar arrange things, make the environment or make the sequence of experiences such that it will lead to your desired outcomes. So arrange things so that this instrument serves his pleasures and soon he will apply himself to it in spite of you. So how is he going to do this? Let's see. A great business is made of seeking the best methods of teaching reading. Desks and cards are invented. A child's room is made into a printing shop. Locke wants him to learn to read with dice. Now, is that not a clever invention? What a pity. A means sure than all these and the one always forgotten. And, and the one always forgotten is the desire to learn. So, we fabricated all these cards, games to help them with uh, help them learn how to read. Where Rousseau says, "Look, the main thing is to cultivate the desire to learn. Give the child this desire, then let your desks and your dice go. Any method will be good for him. Present interest, that is the great mover, the only one which leads surely and far." So a present interest, something there they feel in the present moment. So what's going to happen? Let's see. Sometimes Emil receives from his father, from his mother, from his relatives, from his friends, notes of invitation for a dinner, for a walk, for an outing on the water, for watching some public festival. These notes are short, clear, distinct, well-written. Someone has to be found who can read them to him. This someone either is not always to be found on the spur of the moment or is paying the child back for his unwillingness to oblige him the day before. So child can't read it. Here's a note. 
an invitation to something, but the child can't read it, so it needs to find someone who can read it, but they're not always available, uh, or they're not willing to do it because of some offense from before, which gets to kind of the overarching uh, moral development of the child. Thus, the occasion, the moment, is missed. So because he can't find someone who can read it, he misses out on uh, the outing or whatever it was that the, uh, that the invitation was for. Finally, the note is read to him, but it is too late. Oh, if he had known how to read himself, other notes are received. They are so short. Their subject is so interesting, he would like to try to decipher them. Sometimes he's given help and sometimes he has refused it. So sometimes help is there, sometimes no one is going to help him to read it. Uh, so again, this is like, ah, Emil really wants to be able to read this. Finally, he deciphers half a note. It has to do, it has to do with going tomorrow to eat custard. He does not know where or with whom, how many efforts he makes to read the rest. I do not believe Emil will need the desk. Shall I speak now of writing? No, I am ashamed of playing with this kind of foolishness in an educational treatise. So he's saying, okay, now he's, he's received this note. He's deciphered half of it. He knows that there's an invitation to eat custard somewhere with someone, but he doesn't know where or with whom. And at this point, he doesn't need dice. He doesn't need cards. He doesn't need desks. He doesn't need uh, any sort of computer application, imagining for our day, um, to help him be motivated to learn how to read. He is motivated, and he's going to figure it out. Um, I shall add this one word which constitutes an important maxim. It is that usually one gets very surely and quickly what one is not in a hurry to get. I am almost certain that Emil will know how to read and write perfectly before the age of 10, precisely because it makes very little difference to me that he knows how before 15. But I would rather that he never knew how to read if this science has to be bought at the price of all that can make it useful. Of what use will reading be to him if it has been made repulsive to him forever? So, um, so there's the, there's the vignette. Here's how we um, cultivate the desire to learn. And once we've got that desire to learn, all the other tricks and um, devices to learn how to read are pale in comparison for, uh, with this desire to learn. And it's been uh, arranged and uh, kind of the sequence of experiences make it such that, uh, again, Emil gets these notes. The one note that that Rousseau pulls out is there's an invitation to get custard, but he doesn't know where and he doesn't know with whom. And with that, Emil is has everything he needs to uh, learn how to read, which is most importantly the desire. So that is uh, another vignette from Emil comes from book two.